Hello, my Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. This is the video I have been so excited about making. It is going to be a multi-part series that's going to come out at noon every day for the entire week, and it's all about soil. In this series, we are gonna be going over absolutely everything I, as a soil scientist, believe is necessary to be able to help you decipher through essentially the misinformation that has been put out there and be able to make your own conclusions and give you the tools on how to identify if your soil is healthy, sick, what needs to be added, what needs to be removed, everything. For anyone who is new here, hi. I have a ton of new subscribers. I literally woke up this morning and had like a hundred more than I had the day before. So the channel is blowing up like crazy, but if you do not know me, my name is Ashley. I have a formal education in soil science and a minor in plant science. I am a garden enthusiast, houseplant mom of the extreme. What I do with this information is I test the ideas and I give you my opinion as a scientist as to whether or not it is going to work. We do things like experiments all the way to best practices and everything in between. So if you want more videos on that, that aren't just about soil and are actually on plant care indoor and out, then make sure you smash that subscribe button and share this channel so we can grow it. I don't make any money off of this. This is completely for hobby. So um, there's no sponsorships or anything crazy. So if you guys do enjoy this, you find it helpful and you want to learn more, then make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you get notified every time a new video pops up. So the main things that we're going to be going over when it comes to the soil side of the series is we're going to be going over soil structure, both in the landscape and then within our pots, because us as gardeners, that's what we're concerned about. Then I'm going to be going over the physical structure of a soil aggregate and how that's going to affect things like watering, nutrition, plant growth, everything. Then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going over the soil chemistry. So I'm going to be talking about what soil is considered fertile versus what is not fertile. And I'm going to be testing out some common gear you find out, find at Home Depot, claim to test your soils, test your pH, and I'm going to show you which ones I recommend and why. We are going to be performing some experiments and a lot of these experiments are super fun, completely safe to do with children if you have children or for you to do at home. I will be giving you all the steps to perform these experiments so you can test some of your soil at home. Once we understand the structure and the chemistry of soil, we can then get into the fertilizer. And so what I've done is I've gone out and I've gotten stakes, crystals, liquid, Gra the granular balls, the slow release little ball things. I've gotten every possible type of fertilizer, purchased it and brought it here so we can perform some tests on that, those fertilizers so I can give you the best information on what you need to use to fertilize your soil. But for those organic folk, we are also going to be looking at organic amendments and how to build up on organic garden. Now, if you're interested in going organic and have been going conventional, I am going to have those tips and tricks in this series as well. So like I said, this week is going to be jam packed with information. You're probably going to have to watch some of these videos a few times, but I'm going to try to condense them as much as I can so I can fill it with information, but make it super easy to understand. So get a notebook maybe and press play. So one of the main tools that a soil scientist will use is this book. So every country will have one of these and inside the book, it gives you ways of going about identifying soil. When we can identify the parent material of the soil, we can then identify what will grow and what will not grow in that area. The best way to go about identifying a soil and one of the only ways of going about identifying the soil profile you have is actually to dig a pit. So when a soil scientist digs a pit, it looks something like this and it has layers. So I'm actually going to take you guys out to the field with me and I'm going to show you a really good example that's close to my home. And you guys can actually try to find examples to this near your home as well because they're commonly seen where you're driving everywhere. It's gonna be really cool, but we're gonna wait for that till the end of the video. 
Now, when we look at our soil profile, what we're looking at is the different layers. When it comes to gardening or house plants, we don't really care about all the layers. Truthfully, we're just working in that first OM layer or horizon O, which is a te technically just organic material with a little bit of soil in it. Sometimes we move down to horizon A, which is a mix of our organic material that has been processed and mixed with soil aggregates and parts of the parent material. Now, if you have a garden that is on the ground and you haven't purchased soil to bring in, or if you have soil that you had made locally by a landscape company and then brought to your home and dumped, you may wanna look into what parent material that soil was taken from. The reason why we wanna ask your landscape company or where the soil came from or where it was harvested from is because we wanna know what the parent material is. The importance of the parent material to the soil profile is that it's going to indicate how acidic or basic it is and also what's already naturally occurring in the soil. So a hint I can give to you for Saskatchewan, for example, where I am in zone three, is that there's a lot of lime naturally occurring in our soil. If it was taken out of an area that has parent material of say limestone, you're going to have more lime in your soil. If you have parent material that's taken out of an Aeolian area, which is essentially sand dunes, then you know you're going to have more sand in your soil. Now we'll get into what that means a little bit later on. But the important thing is, is that you need to ask the question. Now, if it comes to potting soil mix that's just in a bag, you don't have to ask that question because that is heavily mechanically engineered and selected specific to potted plants. So I wouldn't worry about potting soil, but if we're talking about garden, then that is something that we wanna look into. So let's look at the soil porosity because this is important for understanding the rest of the episodes. Soil porosity is going to affect both our soil physics and our soil chemistry. It's going to affect how fertilizers react within our soil as well as how water is processed through our soil, even to how the roots move through it. So I'm gonna put some photos up on the screen. So you can see from these photos that sand looks drastically different than clay. Sand we can think of as marbles, and then silt we can think of as little grains of salt. And then clay we can think of as almost as sheets that are closely put on top of each other. Now, when we have just the sand, the water will run through it easier. When we have just the silt, the water will run through and some will stay. When we have the clay, it may just stay on the surface and not penetrate at all. When we mix all the soils together, we get something called a soil aggregate. And depending on the combination of sand, silt, and clay affect how water, nutrients, and roots move through that profile. Every year it is important that we mechanically manipulate the soil. This mechanical manipulation helps ensure that the water can pass through the soil properly. So to help explain what compaction is and how it affects our soil porosity and how water and nutrients moves through the soil profile, we are going to set up an experiment. So for this experiment, the soil I'm using is actually just my DIY potting soil. So we'll see how this acts under compaction and under um, basically shrinkage of our soil porosity. So this pack right now is light and fluffy. It is completely dry. So we're gonna put this into our containers and we'll see what happens. So this is a experiment you can try at home with your kids. There's nothing wrong with that, but in the name of being ultra specific, we do have a weigh scale to make sure that this is as accurate as possible. So we're going to put our container on and zero it out. So we will put in that'll be enough to even see a result. So we put in one ounce of soil in this container. 
and then we will try this one. Zeroed out. And you can actually try this with your potting soil at home. And if you notice that you don't have enough, uh, or that you notice that it's not working the way you wanted it to, or it's not draining through, you know what you need to add. Or if it's draining through too quickly, you'll know what to add. Especially when we get to the episode about fit soil physics, um, you'll understand that if you have too much sand, that means it's gonna come out too quickly. If you have too much clay, it's holding on to too much. So that'll help you be able to adjust. Okay, so that one is also now at one ounce. So shut that off right now. Oh, I guess it is auto shut off. Okay, so we have two containers of soil and what we're going to do is we are going to compact one more than the other. So eeny, meeny, miny, moe, catch a tiger by his toe. If you always let them go, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. This one is the one we are going to compact. So I'm just going to take a glass and smoosh it away. So this would be what would happen if we were walking in our garden or we left our pots outside and the soil compacted because of the snow. This can happen from animals walking on it. This can just happen naturally because of the laws of physics and gravity. So compaction is normal, but it's our job as gardeners to make sure that we break this compaction up because if we don't, what ends up happening is it affects how nutrients, roots, and water actually goes through the profile. So you can see compacted, and I'm sure you recognize this from when you're uh, getting your pots ready or in the springtime compared to this, which is nice and light and fluffy. Oh yeah, that's nice stuff. Okay, so we shall put these in their containers and now we fill our cup up with water. So we'll zero out our cup, make sure everyone gets the same treatment. So we're gonna do 2.2 ounces per cup. And I wanna do this at the exact same time, so. Zeroed out. There we go, 2.2. All right, so now, we get to watch how fast the water, oh, we have a little bit of water in here, we gotta get rid of that. So now we're gonna watch how fast the water goes through these. So I just wanna see what you guys can see. So we have compacted versus non-compacted, and we are going to Loosen the caps on these just a tadly bit, just so they're on like the last possible rung. Oh shit. So we can put this on the last possible rung here and we're just gonna see how quickly the water comes out and exactly how much water we end up getting out. So we'll do the non-compacted first. So we can watch how it moves through the profile. Oops, and it's already out the bottom. So you can see how it's moving around. You can almost see the air pockets in there and how that's going to affect how the water goes through. Now this is also means it's going to affect things like 
how the nutrients go through the soil and how the plant roots go through the soil. So you can see that is how it's gone through and it's still coming out. So we're going to put this guy down. Now let's try the compacted one. And I can guarantee you this one's not going to be as quick. So now you can see how the water is sitting on the top and it's really taking its time getting through the profile. So here you can see there's not a lot of airflow in this soil. It is very compact. That means the roots aren't getting air. And that also means that the nutrients isn't getting through. So you can see it going through slowly, slowly, slowly. And we can actually set this guy down. I think he's gonna take a while. So this is mechanical manipulation and this is the difference between the two. So you can see this one, light, fluffy. We have a ratio of water, soil, nutrients, and air. This is what roots like, and this is what roots do not like because they can't get any air. They aren't able to breathe. And this compacted soil is one of the number one reasons why plants, there we go. <laughs> this is the number one reason why we see plants that are waterlogged or sick. So remember, if you feel like you're always overwatering and your soil's not draining properly, it may have nothing to do with the type of soil you have and it has everything to do with have you fluffed or have you not fluffed your soil lately. So this goes for potted plants as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that experiment. I hope you enjoyed that lesson on soil porosity and soil structure. Make sure you remember that as best as you can because tomorrow we are getting into the physics of soil. Okay, so that is our experiment on soil porosity. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was actually really cool to see it work out. I've never tried that before. I wasn't even 100% sure if it was going to work or not, but my theory has standed correct or stood correct through it all. Um, if you guys enjoyed that, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share this video for anyone who may be wondering why their plants are waterlogged or not doing very well. It may just come down to this and not so much their soil, so keep that in mind. Let's go check out that soil pro profile I promised you, and I will see you guys tomorrow at noon. Bye! Okay, so we are here. This is an area that they're using for backfill in a new uh, housing development, but this has been undisturbed long enough that you can actually see the soil horizons. So I'm just gonna zoom in on this. So now you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So you see that topsoil layer, how it's different than the second layer down below. So that's your A horizon, then there's your B horizon, and at the very top, that is your OM. So you guys can find this stuff literally anywhere in your area, and you can have a good idea of how rich your soil is or how depleted it is based on that top layer. So the thicker that black portion, the more fertile your soil is or the more organic matter that is in your parent material from the landscape companies that you get. So like I said, this is in a housing development, and there are literally houses right there. So this is very common. You can find this in your own backyard. So I hope you enjoyed that. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something about parent material and soil porosity. Stay tuned for day two. It gets even more exciting and the tests and experiments get even more wild. So if you like this, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, hey there. Are you still watching? Make sure to hit that subscribe button for some more awesome podcasts.